Hello and welcome to Mr. Sally's story time. Today, it's a story about money. Money and a pack of cards. And I thought of this story when I got an email this morning from my accountant saying, hey, Mr. Sales, you know how the government's going to give up to £2,500 to every self-employed person? And I said, yes, I know that. And then the email said, but he's not going to give it to you because you are a company director and you only pay yourself £11,000 a year. And that means the government will only pay you £500 a month. Terribly sorry about that. And, do you know, I didn't mind at all. I thought, wow, my government is going to pay me £500 a month in case I suffer hardship. I find that utterly incredible. I find it amazing that we live in a country where the government has said, you know what, and this is to everybody in the country, we know these are hard times, we're going to pay you. Compare that to 2008, our last international crisis, when the government said, actually, we're going to take all your tax money and we're going to go and give it to the banks because the banks need your money, otherwise they'll fail. What a world we live in now. So why am I so happy to get so little money? Well, here comes the story of the pack of cards. So once upon a time, my father met my mother. My father was Spanish, my mother English, and they met on holiday. My father owned a bar, or rather he ran a bar when he was 19. And he met my gorgeous mother on Lorette de Mar's coastline, running his bar, and a romance blossomed. There were many twists and turns which won't concern us now. However, my mother returned home after her two-week holiday, and six months later, the young Spaniard, Jose Maria Jaime Antonio Gubiana Salles, arrived and said, remember me. Well, she did remember him, but she was engaged to something else. But no matter, my father persevered. He persisted. He was very determined. And eventually, my mother said, oh, OK, then, let's get married. So in the early years of their marriage, my father didn't have a proper profession, of course, because he was just a Spanish ignorant with uh, ignorant immigrant with no education. However, he had an adventurous spirit. And he decided to get employed in Mayfair's casinos. Now, Mayfair's casinos at the time were run by people of ill repute, or to put it another way, crime families. And my father's casino was run by the Maltese Mafia, a little known mafia who did not indulge in chocolate treats, but came from Malta. So my father began as a croupier, the person who deals out the cards to the gamblers. But he was very good at this and got promoted to be head croupier. His main job was supervising all the tables where the cards were being dealt to make sure that the croupiers were not fiddling the books and setting up little scams with the other gamblers. So things went swimmingly until one day, by fair means or foul, Mr O'Day, the head of the Mafia from Malta, lost control of his gambling empire. Perhaps he sold it, perhaps another crime family moved in. History does not relate. However, my father was pretty attached to Mr O'Day and not so much to the new owners. And then he saw an opportunity. He found that the owners brought in new cards. And by circulating the tables, he noticed that there was a pattern to how the cards appeared in the pack. Yes, he noticed that at every table, the cards arrived in the same order. Well, he knew someone would spot that eventually, and so he acted fast. He memorized the order of cards. He came home, he said to my mother, hey, guess what? I know the order of cards, and I have an idea how we could make that work. We are going to teach your mother and we're going to teach her partner, so my grandparents, and we're going to teach a couple of your friends from Bingo, including Fat Mick. And so the six of them 
learnt the order of the cards and they rehearsed at home what order that would come out and who would bet what and when. And then they went to Mayfair and played blackjack. That night, they cleaned the casino out for £100,000. And that would have been in 1967, when £100,000 was worth quite a bit of money. I don't know how they split it, but I do know my father was sacked because their crime family, or legal owners of the casino, I don't know which, worked out that there must have been some hanky-panky going on. So my father thought, well, let's get out of the country. And luckily for him at that time, I was also in dire need of a better climate. Yes, I had nearly died twice from pneumonia in the 1960s, and the doctor said, take him away, he won't survive another winter. And my father said, Ooh, that sounds pretty bad news. I wonder where we can go. Let's go to Spain, and off to Ibiza we went. Yep, we went off to Ibiza, and he spent part of his ill-gotten gains on acquiring a bar. In San Antonio, the first tourist resort on the island, and the rest of the money he put into a parcel of land in the Seychelles, where no one would know about it. Well, the bar did quite well, and eventually they wanted to expand, so he sold the land on the Seychelles. I don't know for how much. However, six months later, guess what the Seychellian government built there? Yes, the National Airport. My father would have been very close to a millionaire, I imagine, if he'd kept on to that land, but he didn't. Never mind. He built up, and my mum built up, a restaurant, a shop, a flat to let out, a bar, and a flat that we lived in. Life was good. It was sunny nearly every day. My sister and I roamed freely across this island paradise, which hadn't yet become the party capital of the Mediterranean. And then, after many adventures over seven years... My father decided it would be really good to get back in the gambling business, and he took up poker. Unfortunately, he wasn't any good at poker, and so over a period of a few weeks, he lost absolutely everything. The restaurant, the bar, the shop, the flat above that we could rent out, and the flat that we lived in. Everything we owned, gone. My father disappeared. My poor old mother took me and my sister to go off and live in Canada, where we stayed in the basement of a friend, a childhood friend from the Second World War. How exciting is that? And I've no idea how, but after a few months, my father reappeared and said, Hi, do you remember me? I'm really sorry I lost everything that we own. And my mum said, Fair play, let's start again. They went and handed themselves in to the Canadian government and said, We're in a bit of a fix here. Would you be able to deport us? to England. And the Canadians said, do you know what? Actually, I think we could. And so off we went to London and started again from nothing. But here's the thing. Did we have to live on the streets? No. Camden Council said, we do not have a council flat for you, but we will put you up in a bed and breakfast for 17 months. And so that's what happened. My sister and I shared a little room about six foot by nine foot, and my parents shared the other. My mum became a traffic warden, and my dad went off to Iran, where he worked in the Shah of Iran's casinos, until the revolution. And so, yes, Iran had a revolution, and my father had to flee with his life, and came home again, with nothing. However, we got a council flat, and they worked hard. Before they split up again one day when I was about 18 years old and my father went round the world to discover himself and my mother moved to Wales and lost loads of money on dodgy properties. And then when my dad was in his 50s, he gambled everything away again and started from nothing. And then my mum moved back to London and she got a council flat. And then lung disease after a lifetime of smoking 40 cigarettes a day. And in the last four years of her life, she gave up smoking near enough altogether and managed to save from her state pension £6,000. That's all she had when she died. Her whole lifetime's work, her lifetime's possessions, £6,000. But here's the thing. 
we live in an amazing country where having £6,000 is actually a lot of money. And so I guess there are two morals to this story. One, we live in one of the most amazing countries in the world. And two, no matter how bad things get financially, you can always start again from nothing. I hope you don't know, but it's nice to know that Britain is a place where you can do it time and time again. Stay safe, make the most of your family and make the most of your isolation. See you soon.